This is the first small group discussion with J. Krishnamurti in Rome, 1973. What shall we talk about? If we could choose a third particular problem and work it out carefully and investigate it really deeply, I think it would be worthwhile. So what shall we talk over together? Is there anything more we could say about be, becoming aware of our inattention? What is it if one is inattentive? What is it that is able to be aware of inattention? Do you want to dis talk over together the question of awareness with all its implications? <clears throat> what do you say? Should we do that? Let's go into it very deeply if we can. And let's begin, if we may, from the outside and then work gradually inside. May we do that? You hear that bus going by, the noise of the motor going down the hill. Who is aware of it? Who hears it? There is the noise, the vibrations of that noise, the hearing of it, the translating of that noise into words, then the thought, then the recognition that it is a motor going down the hill. All this process goes on. The hearing, the verbalization, the recognition and the naming the noise and so on. That's one type of awareness, isn't it? Then there is the awareness of seeing. Seeing a flower visual perception, the, the colour, the naming of that colour, the recognition of the flower, and the recognition of the flower is the memory of past, a remembrance and the naming of that colour, right? Are you following, following all this? 
And that's another kind of awareness, isn't it? The hearing, the seeing. Then there is also the other kind of awareness, which is the reading. You read a sentence or a book and you go through the same whole process. So there is reading, seeing, hearing. That's all part of awareness, isn't it? In all that, there is the process of recognition, memory, experience, knowledge. Right? Please, this is a, dis- this is a discussion between us. I am not just talking. <laughs> this is a conversation between us. We are sharing this thing together. I happen to be sitting on a chair because it's more convenient for you to look at me and I look at you, but there is no authority here at all. So there is this (coughs) awareness of external things. Recognition of a house colour, the seeing of a house colour, the proportions of a house, the beauty of a house, architecture, music, the whole movement of the world about us. From there one can go inwardly. What is this awareness inwardly? To be aware of one's thought. May I go on? You're sharing this with me, please. (laughs) To be aware of one's thought. Thought is memory. experience, knowledge. That is the whole movement of thought. Without experience, without knowledge, without memory, there is no thought. Right? So, Thought is the movement of memory, and who is it that is aware of the various thoughts? Right? I say I am aware of my thoughts. <coughs> is the entity who is aware of the many of the movement of thought, is he different from the thought? I think this is really very important if I may point out. It's very important to understand this, because if we see this really, not verbally or intellectually, but really deeply understand this problem, then we shall eliminate altogether this whole world of conflict, outwardly and inwardly. Therefore, I think it is very important, if I may point out, to understand this. 
So when, why, when, one, when one says, I am aware of my thinking, Is the thinker different from the thought of which he says, I am aware of that thought? Do please discuss this with me. Don't accept what I am saying, please. If they are separate, that is, if the thinker is separate from thought, then what takes place? You understand my question? What takes place when the thinker or the experiencer or the observer is different from the observed, from the thought, from the experience, then what happens? You understand, when there is this division between the thinker and the thought, what happens? There's a wrestling match. sir? There's a wrestling match. One between the other. There's a wrestling match. There's a wrestling match between the two. That's one thing. Investigate it more, sir. You will see it for you. Let's go into a little more. You say it is a wrestling match between the thinker and his thought, which is supposed to be different. When there is this division between the thinker and the thought, there is conflict, there is a battle, there is a wrestling going on. Why? How has this division taken place in the human mind? You understand my question? Why is there this division between God and man, if there is a God? Why is there a difference, division between the Arab, the Jew, the communist, the socialist, the imperialist, the capitalist? You follow this division, man, woman, black and white, good and bad. How has this division taken place? Because I think it is important to understand this. Because all our moral, social activity, economic pressures, religious sanctions and so on, all that is based on this division. Do invest, don't accept it, please. Do see this. Devil, the bad and the good, heaven and hell, the thinker and the thought, the higher self and the lower self, the soul and the body. <laughs> the Hindus would call it the Atman, that is the, the spiritual entity in man who is different from the ordinary activity of man. Why has this division between the thinker and thought has taken place. Because the me wants to protect itself. The me wants to protect itself. I, I don't know the me yet. I only know 
the thinker who says, I am aware, I must be aware of what I am thinking. I haven't come to the me yet, forgive me. The thinker says, I must be aware of my thinking. Why has this division between the thinker and his thought, how, why has this division arisen? He is conditioned to be afraid. No, investigate, sir. You know, investigare, which means to trace out, to explore. Well, those are contradictory sometimes. So, uh, there is something, I cannot define it, which wants to put order between thoughts and... Uh, and that is, sir, you, you are saying thought is so disorderly that to bring about an order in this disorder, that a a thinker is necessary, an outside agency, a, a, a different entity must bring about order. Is that...? Well, I'm not saying this. I see the process of it. Yes, you see the process of it. That is, you are saying thought is so restless so disjointed, so disorderly, wandering all over the place, chattering. And who is it that says there must be order in this chaos? I think uh, conditioner. Yes. I think a, a, a system of conditioning. A system of conditioning, education, exactly. the culture, the religion, the economic condition, the environment, hmm? the culture has produced this. You are saying, why? You understand my question? Why? Why has this division? Sorry, I keep on repeating this. I hope you are not bored with it. Why is there this division between the thinker and the thought? Let me put the question differently. Why is there a difference between greed, envy, and the entity who says, I am, I like greed, I am going to be greedy, and the entity that says, greed is ugly, I must get rid of it. You understand? This division. Why has this division between the entity who says, I must be free of greed, and greed? Come on, sir, think it out. Because I think this is very important. Because once we have the clue to this, the real key to it, then we'll, it will be, it'll open a door into something. You'll have tremendous energy to go through a, a door that goes first. We'll come to that presently. Why is there this division between greed and the um, entity who says there must be no envy, no ambition, and so on? Why is there this division? Medika, Pep, for war. Medika. Time? Time in, the timeless coming into time. Time. Time for what?
And what do we mean by time? Do please just go into this, because it's very important, this. I am greedy. I am envious. I get angry, jealous. And then there is an entity in me which says, don't be greedy, don't be envious of people. Which is the true entity? Hmm? First you have to talk about which is the true entity, no? The true entity? If there is a division, then one is false. If there is a division, one is for one is a false thing. If the thought is, is and the thinker are divided, then the thought is taught and not coming from the self. Right? So you say there is a self which is superior to thought and the thinker. No, that the thought must come from the self for it to be an entire. Yes. Yeah. Now, what is that self? And you see, you're going to be... <laughs> well, the thought can't exist without the thinker, can it? Obviously not. Well, then, therefore, well, why are they separate? That's really one thing. Thought, you are saying, sir, thought cannot exist, thinker cannot exist without thought. No, I mean the thought can't exist without the thinker. Yes, thought, ah? Huh? The thought no, cannot no. exist without the thinker. So the thinker is the thought. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. But you... And without thought, the movement of thought, is there a thinker? The movement of thought being the word, the, recogni the recognizing process, of memory, all the accumulated experience which is knowledge, without all that which is the thinking movement, without that movement is there a thinker? Th one can invent a superior self, <laughs> you follow? A higher self, the real self. But it is still the movement of thought. No? Well, there is uh, something else, I think, uh, uh, beyond uh, thought and thinker. I, I mean, uh, uh, without uh, the recognition uh, movement, uh, there is even something else. What is I mean, uh, for example, we live uh, between, uh, uh, we receive uh, from the outside many, many things. Impressions. Uh, impressions. Yes. Uh, which we don't recognize. Yes. We leave them, we see them, but uh, we don't uh, put them into a, a thought process. You are saying, sir, so you, all the time we are receiving impressions. All the time there are various kinds of influences pouring down into us. Some of them we recognize, and majority of them we don't recognize. Right. And the recognition process, you are saying, are you, is only functions up to a certain point, and the rest it is absent. We are not absent. absent. Which is not there. Oh, no. I... I, so, look, let me put it this way. I'm trying to understand what you're saying. There are all kinds of impressions, influ influences working on the mind, on the human being. Environment, pollution, uh, e economic conditions. 
social, cultural, religious, the war, everything is operating on the human mind. Unconsciously, you may receive all that. Consciously, you recognize them and leave it there. You say, yes, that is, uh, I don't like or like or this or that. But the ma majority of the influences are stored up in the unconscious. Is that what you're trying to say? Well, uh, no, I'm trying to say that uh, uh, we may live without thought. I mean, but, uh, that uh, uh, we may leave an impression without putting it into the recognition. Into the words, recognition, words, remember. I understand that, I understand that, sir. But that's not what we are trying to understand, sir, so just a minute. Yeah, uh, that's true also, you, what you said, that, that uh, um, we are putting a lot of impressions uh, into an unconscious, uh, subconscious, unconscious uh, realm, uh, and, um, a level which we don't recognize moment by moment. And since, but for the moment, what we are trying to discuss is, trying to understand is, why this division between greed and the entity says, I must not be greedy. Why has this division arisen? At the moment that I, read, that I see there's greed, there's a, a certain time lapse. In that time lapse, my thought processes, my conditioning, the words interfere. It says greed. It names it. It says here, this here, X located in this area of the body is greed. This thought knows, associates the greed I understand. because we see it naked. Yes, sir. Now, I'm greedy. Suppose I'm greedy. I see what greed has done in the world, what envy has done in the world. Ambition, competition, economic, the, the envy of poor man to, uh, with, uh, um, with rather rich man, this whole process of envy. <clears throat> if we accept it, I say that uh, it's quite all right to be envious, there's no problem. Mm -hmm. But the moment you say, I don't want it, it's an ugly thing, mm -hmm. I must get rid of it. Now, who is the entity that says, I must get rid of it? Let's stick to that one point. It's still that greed, but calls himself non greed. <laughs> no, because it's a result of all your past experience, isn't it? Yes, my lady, Thank you are missing. I understand that, of course. The entity would be the part that uh, evaluates it, condemns it, which is a part of the So, aren't you greedy? Huh? Yes. And have you ever said, I mustn't be greedy? Yes. Hmm? Now, who is that entity that says, I mustn't be greedy? Greed. We go into it a little bit, of course, it, but I explore it, sir. When you say, I mustn't be greedy, is it your conditioning? The conditioning response says you mustn't be greedy. Or is it you see what is happening in the world where there is the operation of envy, hmm? when the envy is functioning, you see what it results in the world hmm? outside you. And because you see the horror it has produced in the world, wars, economic wars, religious wars, you follow? Then you say, greed is terrible because you have observed it, seen the result, and you say greed is ugly. And you see it in yourself uh, being greedy. Now, how do you get be free of it? 
because there is an entity that says you must be free of it. Is that the reason you're free of it? You understand what I'm talking? Explaining? Am I making it too complex? See what happens. I'm greedy. There's an entity in me, an entity which says I mustn't be greedy. Then he begins to control it. Hmm? Right? He begins to fight it. Or he begins to suppress it. You follow? Hmm? So there is, as you use the word, wrangle going on, wrestling going on between the entity who says, I must not be greedy, and the fact he, it is, there is greed. Right? So, what it, I mustn't yet come to, I'll come to that. So the conflict goes on. Hmm? This has been our culture, right? This has been our education, both religiously, morally, socially, politically, in every direction this has been our culture. Right? Now I say to myself, why does the why is there this entity who says I must get rid of it? Who is that entity? You understand? Who is that entity? Is he God? <laughs> Super self, the real self, the Atman, the Brahman, the um, the the supreme uh, super consciousness. Who is that entity? Says, out. Is that entity different from greed, or both are the same? You understand? If both are the same, then what happens to greed? You follow? I don't know if are we moving the, with together with this or we When there is an entity who says I must get rid of violence because I see what it has done, what violence has done in the world the wars, the brutality, the sorrow it brings, all that. See what happens. The entity says, I must get rid of violence, and he battles with it. And it takes many days to get rid of violence in battle. At the end of his life, he says, I am still battling with violence. Right? So he said, it's a game that he's playing, isn't it? He doesn't say, end it. Now, if both are the same, hmm, that the entity who says, I, I must get rid of violence, is violence itself, right? Isn't that so? Isn't the entity himself violent? He's, he's constituted in violence. So there is no difference between the observer and the observed. Right? between the entity who says, I must get rid of violence, that very entity is violence, because 
And if he could not, if he cannot recognize violence, there is no violence. Because he recognizes it, he is of it. I wonder if you see this, right? Clear? Is this really clear? Huh? No. Come? It is very clear, but in one moment it goes away. No, 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 it won't. It's, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. What do you mean by clear? I understand that. Ah, no, Miss Cousy, Signora, one moment. What do you mean by being clear? Do you, do you, are you clear when you say I am clear? I understand. Is it that you are understanding the words? Wait. Understanding the ideas? No, I recognize that if I am angry and I see anger in somebody else, I recognize the same feeling, so I am hmm. obviously the same thing. No, I we're not talking of somebody else. <laughs> Look, when I I've just stated the speaker just has stated that the entity who says, I must get rid of violence, please listen, the entity who says he must get rid of violence must know what violence is to get rid of it. Right? No? So the entity who says, I am get rid of violence, both are violence. There is not one is not different from the other. Come on, sir. Well, then it's a sort of degree of violence. Mm -hmm. Well, then the, the wait, wait. Cannot exist without the thing. The thing. Therefore, is. both are the same. I want to come to the the thing. The entity who says I must get rid of violence and violence are identical. So it's green, a form of violence. I've changed the word. It doesn't matter. We'll we change another word. Then my problem is I'm violent. I see that. Not only there is violence in me, I've been educated from childhood to be violent. Competition imitation, conformity, obedience, accepting authority, and all the structure that makes for violence, maybe the army, the rulers, all that, I have been educated in that culture. And in that culture it says, be violent and yet also be don't violent. <laughs> the priest tells me, live peacefully with God in your lap, and on the other hand, the politician and the crooks and all their business and all that, they say, fight. I am caught in that. I am that. That is not different from me, right? I am that, because I have been brought up in that culture. And in that culture I have been educated to say that thinker is different from thought. In that culture I have been told, educated, the thinker is the highest form of the Supreme God, the higher self, the all, and so on. And I am greedy. So there is a battle going on between good and bad, right? <clears throat> now I say, look, I know all this. I, there is something very wrong in all this, because at the end of my life I am still battling with violence. Right? 
so stupid, there's something very wrong in all this. So I say to myself, who is the thinker? Who is the entity that says, out with violence? Is not the if the entity didn't recognize violence, hmm, he would be different. You understand? But the moment he recognizes it, he has already known it. Right? You see this? Therefore, he is violence. The observer is the observed. Right? I am left with that. I am left with the fact of what is, which is violence. Right? You understand? Before I have battled with violence, saying there is a me which is different from violence, and I have battled with it, conquered it, tried to suppress it, tried to overcome it, you know, excuse it, rationalize it, did everything possible, and it's still there. Now I realize the entity who battles with violence is violence. And so I'm left with violence. You understand? You you go oh no, are you meeting my huh? what happens? Go on, now you now come to the point. It's really go into it, you will see it for yourself. So can one not observe violence in the world without being part of it necessarily? But you are part of the world. Yes. Aren't you? But we can see violence taking place. No, but sir, without aren't you sense. part of the world? <laughs> yes. Huh? Yes. You're part of this culture. Christian, Catholic, Protestant, Communist, Socialist, Imperialist, mm -hmm, all the rest of it. You are part of this culture. You are the world and the world is you. And the world has taught you to be violent and to be, get rid of violence. <laughs> so I'm, I am stuck with this thing. Right? Now, am I really stuck with it? I want to find out. I have known the battle between the thinker and the thought, between what is and what should be, between the observer and the observed. Uh, there's been hmm, battle going on. Now what happens when the observer is the observed? What happens in actuality, not theoretically, when the entity says, I myself am violent? Hmm? You understand? What, what happens then? In the battle can stop. Huh? In the battle can stop. You say the battle stops. It can stop. Huh? It can stop. Uh, your gen theory, theory isn't good enough for me. I'm so hungry. I'm hungry. Don't give me ashes. It stops. It stops. Give me food. And you say, it can't stop. Sorry, I want to find out what happens. What acts intelligence? I know. Don't say, does, do you know it has stopped with you? Otherwise you... Then the thinking process is gone. Then you... you no, sir. Have no, sir. Anymore. <laughs> Once you recognize the entity is one, there's no battle. And then what happens to violence? 
comes. You don't see it anymore. And it, yeah, then you're all guessing. I mean, uh, to me, it happened that uh, when I uh, saw violence, I recognized it in myself. Huh? And I didn't want to escape. Uh, Look, sir. No, please. Care, please go into it carefully. There's a battle going on between the entity, between the observer and the observed, right? Let's stick to those two words, the observer and the observed. The observed is violence. And the entity who says, who is the observer, says, I must get rid of it, I must do something. Who is the observer? Is he not the past memories? No? Also a kind of fantasy, no? Oh? I mean, a, a, a kind of fantasy, this, this other, this no, other self, no, in it, the sense that it, it, it gives you the idea that there's a choice, that you can stop or not go or, or not. It is not a fantasy, it is a reality, from, otherwise this battle wouldn't... Who is the observer? Is he not the past? The past being memory, experience, knowledge. The, that conditioned entity who says, I must not be envious. Come on, sir, it's so simple, what are you? Yeah. And so he says, when the observer says, realizes, the observer is the observed, hmm? what has taken place? Sir, can I please, sir? Avanti, Avanti. My only answer to you here can be one of silence. I have no answer for you because I can only give you a theoretical answer and if you want something real. No, I don't. Right. Sir, so theoretical answers have no value. Right, if I say to you it disintegrates, so what you'll say, but you're theorizing, I'm saying. No, I'm going to show you something, please. What, what happens when there is a battle, a wrestling? going on between the observer and the observed. What takes place? What, is, what happens when I am battling with you? There's a tension, there's a conflict, there's a position. What happens a, in that? There's a struggle, there's a, a movement apart. Sir, so look, there's a war going on in the Middle East. It just stopped, fortunately. What happens? There's very destruction. Go on, go on, what happens? Look at the look at the wastage of material. Yes. Hmm? Wastage of human beings. The wastage of all the technical knowledge put into killing is a tremendous wastage, isn't there? Tremendous. Hmm? Not only in tears, in sorrow, in agony of the people who have been killed, but also in the wastage of material. Hmm? The, all the things of the earth have been destroyed. Hmm? Right. Now, what happens when there is a battle between the observer and the observed? Wait, 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 what happens? Is that not also a waste state? Okay. Wait, wait. Yeah. Uh, yes? There's a dissipation, no. there's a war. The That's right. War is it is a dissipation of energy. Yes. Please stick to that. I will make this very simple and clear. When there is a battle between the observer and the observed, the wrangling, the wrestling, this constant tug, tug of war going on, 
that is a dissipation of energy. Right? What happens when the observer is the observed? There is no dissipation of energy. Wait! No dissipation of energy. Then what takes place? I go on, you know. Hmm? Come on, sirs. Ah no, <laughs> there is no harmony. There is only <laughs> the observer is the observed. Please, sirs, I'm not going to go over this over. An action born of I'll show you something, sir. Observe it in yourself, and it'll be your bread, not my bread. I see where there is division, there is dissipation of energy, the Jew and the Arab, hmm? the observer and the observed. Wherever there is a division, there must be a wrangling, a battle, a conflict, which is a wastage of energy. I, I see that as fact, what is happening in the world. Then I also see in myself, where there is a division in myself, as the observer and the observed, there is a, con- there is a wastage of energy. Right? So, but the fact remains violence. Hmm? The energy which had been dissipated before has now has got tremendous energy to go beyond what is. You understand what I'm saying? Between, I go beyond the thing called violence. You go beyond it. The mind is free of violence. When energy is being dissipated in conflict, that very energy becomes the new energy to go beyond what, what is beyond the, the thing which we have called violence. Mind, then, is free of violence. It is my say-so, not yours. <laughs> Therefore it has no value to you unless you see this thing. So could you explain that to me? Perhaps describe or say a little bit more about the difference between the seeing and the recognition. Because in one place you Ah, recognize wastage, and the other you see wastage. What is the difference? The seeing and recognition. That's what you're asking. What's the difference between recognizing process and if there is a difference what is the seeing process? Hmm? The recognizing process is the continuance of memory in the present. Right? Obviously. I met you yesterday and therefore I have a recollection, the remembrance of you, and I meet you today, and you say, how are you? You are that person. So the recognition process is memory, the movement of memory in the present. Right? This is not the the end. Now, is that different from seeing? Very much. What do you mean, very much? If you well, see violence, you instantly recognize it as violence. You see it, the recognition is so quick, 
It is not some vague concept. You it understood violence. her question, sir? This is imp- yes. She's asked you something. Yeah, and uh, that's uh, what I wanted to say before. And uh, I mean, the difference be- between seeing immediately, uh, while I am violent, uh, and maybe I may fight against violence, uh, I see this uh, and it stops. No. Yes, perhaps you are right, sir. Look, find out, sir. We see, <coughs> we we understand what the recogni- what the recognizing process is, right? That's fairly clear, fairly simple. Is that different from seeing? And what is seeing? Well, to me, but, but not to you, not to me. Then we become personal, it becomes an opinion, it becomes rubbish. But the fact, what is seeing? Come? Riconoscere presuppone che uno prima ha l'idea del cosmo. Guardare e guardare senza senza immagine. Immagine. Bene. Now, you are saying recognition is with image, seeing is without image. <laughs> wait, wait, un momento per favore, <laughs> gentilmente. <laughs> Can I see you without any image? If there is image, it's a process of recognition. It's a movement of recognition. And seeing, we say, is the act, perception, observation, without the image, the word. Now, is that possible? You have hurt me. You have hurt me. And can I look at you without the image? You understand, sir? Can you? And no, not uh, suppose you. Yes. Do you do it? Sure. And how do you do it? What, what is the process of doing it? Huh? Look, please, let's put fact, facts, not just theories. I say you are an ugly person. Hmm? You are a fool. I have hurt your image, haven't I? <laughs> the image which you have about yourself, I have hurt it, haven't I? I say you pretend to be a great man, you are really a silly ass. Hmm? That shakes you, doesn't it? So what has happened? I have hurt your image of you. Hmm? Right? Now, can you see me without the image which you have about me, which, and that image has hurt you? Can you see me without the image? That is, can you see your wife, your husband, your brother, your sister, your friend, girl, boy, whatever it is, the priest walking down the road when you say you are <laughs> you're non clerical, <laughs> can you look without any image? This is very eh, with, to look with an image is not only recognition but also a neurotic way of looking at people. <laughs> Right? (laughs) 
I look at you because you have hurt me, me, the image which I have built about myself. And that me, that hurt, is very deep because you have shaken that image very badly. Hmm? And that you, and you are my enemy. <laughs> and I look at you. Can I look at you without that image altogether? And is that possible? If it is possible, how is it done? You understand? That is, the question was the seeing and recognition. Recognition is the movement of memory in time, right? Time may be tomorrow or next year. And seeing is only possible when there is no image. I, if I have coloured glasses, I cannot see the real light. So is it possible for the mind to observe, see and hear without any image? I have lived with my wife for fifteen years. She has done all kinds of things to me, and I have done all kinds of things to her, day in and day out, all the pressures, the ugliness, the irritations, the hurts, the bull you know, you know it. Molto bene. And can you look? Can I look at my wife or my wife look at me, your wife and your husband, can you look at each other without an image? Then you are seeing the other. To look at your wife with an image is recognition. That's an old game we're all playing. So there are so many images that are Layers of association to seeing people. Could we stick to, say, observing a danger or the fact that a certain thing is violence? I see. Right. Violence? I understand. Then one doesn't go off into all these other things. Right, right. The speaker says to you, Please just listen. The speaker says to you, division is destructive. Division is dissipation of energy. You hear that statement, right? What, what do you do with that statement? That's what he's asking. What do you do with that statement? Go on, sir. You know what you're doing with that statement, don't you? Stop dividing. Huh? Finish. You've heard my statement and you hear it. What happens? But it is a fact. Arab and Jew, American and Russian, uh, Hindu and Muslim. We don't, we've gone beyond that. But in one case, it seems to me the mind tries to match these uh, concepts and say, yes, it, it's true because this concept is true and it matches. Or else there's now, something I'm, else. I'm coming that to that. What about. happens to you when you hear that <coughs> statement? As you say, you. Compare what the speaker has said with somebody who has said the opposite, 
or who has said a similar thing, right? So you are comparing, aren't you? That's one fact. If you are not comparing, what takes place? Comparing being what you have already learned, what you have already heard, what you have you yourself have said, what somebody has said, you say, Ajo, is this true? Is this a fact? You go through all that and you put all that aside. Then what? You still hear that statement. What do you do with it? I see it inside myself. You inside see inside my mind, inside my inside the process. Uh, I see it. No, sir, you're not. Please try to answer this. What happens when you hear a statement of this kind? May I go on with it, explain it a little? Don't you translate it into a concept, into an idea? into a a formula, you understand my question? I hear you say division is destructive, division outwardly, inwardly is dissipation and wastage of energy, It it is destructive. I hear you say that. What happens to me? What ha- what takes place in my mind? I've com- I've compared with what you've said, with what I already have learned, and so on, and so on. Then what takes place? I translate what you have said into an idea, don't I? No, I. Don't you all do this? Huh? You say no. Yes. The, uh, yes. Wait, wait, one moment. He says no. What takes place? Parlez en français, vous savez. Allez-y. Is it a transformation? No. No. Transformation? Are you transformed when you say, when you hear that statement? Division is destructive. Is that therefore there is no division in you? I feel so. And, and now thinks, oh, I could have. Uh, you say, which means no division, no conflict inside. There is no me active at all. It is the me that is the very essence of division, the self, the higher self, you may call it, but it is still the self. Therefore the abandonment of the self completely when there is no division. That is what is implied. Now, you hear that statement, what do you do with it? Do you translate it into a concept, into an idea? Don't you? Then you say, how am I to put that idea into action? You see what has taken place? I hear a statement, division is destructive, dissipates this marvellous energy of human beings. And I hear that, I translate it into an idea, then I say to myself, how am I to put that idea into action? So there is already a division, you follow? 
idea and action. I don't put so back again in Gottfried. Don't you have the same concept of putting the idea into words? No, no, wait a minute. You know, the word idea means the word itself. Idea means to see. In from Greek, Latin, and so on, the word means to see. What an extraordinary thing it is. This, we have translated not seeing but an abstraction of what is said into an act. You follow? Which becomes an idea. I wonder if you see this. It doesn't matter that you. So, hmm? it's very interesting how we translate something as a the meaning of a word, the root meaning of a word, into some abstraction with which we fight afterwards. So, you translate what is said into an idea, into a concept, and then try to put that concept, idea, into action. Therefore, there is division there instantly, which becomes the battle. Now. Can you listen, please? Just listen. can you listen to the statement without abstracting it? You understand what I mean? Abstracting. That is drawing from the statement an idea. But sir, before the idea, do you not meet the statement with what one might call evaluation? Of course. In other words. A d- trying to determine, according to one's own ability, if it is true. Yes. Now, isn't that already the thought oh, But that's finished. That, I mean, that's over when you see Arab, Jew, Hindu, Muslim, communist, socialist. That's finished. Yes, but you've evaluated whether that is so or no, not. No, I'm not evaluating. See what is happening actually but in the world. That's, the that's not evaluation. Well, that's what I'd like you to define. That is not evaluation. It is a fact, but... In order to perceive it as a fact, don't we inevitably go through what one would call an evaluation no, process? I don't. I, uh, to me, evaluation is a form of prejudice. Well, then how do we know the, the truth of something? I'll show it to you. Arab and Greek, or no, um, the Jew, are fighting. The Muslim and the Hindu fighting. The communists and the... Capitalists fighting. You see the fact. Wait. Seeing the fact, you say, look what is happening. All the marvelous things of the earth are dissipating in wars. That's a fact. I haven't drawn any conclusion. Isn't I, there evaluation in that statement that that is something monstrous? I, that's, it, that's merely a form of communication to you. No, I mean... To myself I said, this is so, look what human beings are doing. That's a fact. Now inwardly I said, look, division in myself, various fragments of myself, one fragment opposing all the other fragments, the super-self, super-consciousness, the observer fighting everything else. That's a division. That's a wasted dissipation of energy, as the other is. There is no evaluation, just the observation, the seeing the fact needs no evaluation. That needs attention, not to say, look, I must watch it, not draw a conclusion from it. Sorry to get through that. This important track of uh, translating this statement. That's what, we're, that's what I'm, going, I'm doing it now, so we haven't gone off the track. Can the mind listen to a statement without abstraction? You understand what I mean? Abstra- the word abstraction means to draw from the fact, uh, to draw from the fact. A 
an idea. That's what the, to extract is to draw away, to move away from the fact. Move away by creating a, having a conclusion. You are moved away from the fact. When you have a conclusion, you have moved away, wandered away from the fact. That is to abstract from. Uh, in this process, this abstraction, um, it seems to me that that um, we are always getting caught here because we're, we're mistaking as we're talking about the word for the thing described. But the word, the word, the meaning, the significance that it seems to have conceptually is taken as the description. Therefore, the mind so easily makes yes, that sir. That means, sir, the word is not the thing. The description is not the described. Wait, wait. The description is not the described, but we are caught in the description, which is the word, the painting, the symbol, the picture, and all that. The picture, the symbol, the word is not the fact, the described. In fact, that del delusionary mechanism is inherent in the using of the word. Therefore, so, sir, I'm saying, that. can you, listen, can you now, you and I listening now, can you listen to a statement without moving away from the statement, moving away which is, an, which is to move away into ideation. That is, can you listen to the statement that division outwardly and inwardly is most destructive? In that there is no love, in that there is no compassion. It is most, it is, destroys human beings. Hmm? Now, can you listen to that? Completely without the word. What, what, what do you mean without the word? I hear your words I, echoing in my head. No, mean no. Words? Then you are caught then merely with words. You don't see the truth of it. And my question to you was this is the impasse for me. I, uh, I can't respond at this point because I'm hearing your words and cerebrally I say yes because the word is giving me the uh, delusion and yet I imagine that I'm understanding it by seeing it in my own life and I may even see change. So, but so understanding means several things. Understanding verbally, understanding it intellectually, or understanding the statement because, because you have an insight into the statement, because you see the truth of the statement, the truth, which is not yours or mine, the fact. When you see the truth of it, there's no problem anymore. Now, does that happen to you, that when this statement is made, Division is the most destructive thing in existence. Can you listen to it? And because you listen to it without associations, you, there is instant action, which means there is no <laughs> division in you at all. I don't. I am not. Wait, sir. I'm. You may have. I, uh, sorry, I don't want to go after. I want to remain this side of the door still. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sorry. Well. Uh, uh, sorry. I don't say there is not a great feeling, but uh, that's not for the present moment. The. 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 
exact of what we are discussing. What lies beyond the door is another matter. What is this side of the door is what we are concerned with. What we're concerned with, what sees it is true. Huh? What is it that sees it is true if the thought process is in abeyance? What is the thing that sees truth? Right? There is no thing that sees the truth. There is the truth. There is a beauty in that. There is no entity who says, I see light. There is only light. I heard you speak in you know, Ohio Valley some time ago, and you said something that stayed with me for years and years. There was a person who said, how long will the wars last? And you said, as long as we all do not change right here in our heart. That remained with me for many, many, many years, and I wanted to ask you, if one accepts and understands the allness, the completeness and the totality of love, wouldn't that in itself, acceptance, understanding of the totality and allness of love, wouldn't that in itself dissolve the dissipation of thought, the division, and everything else? Madam, then we must know what we mean by that word love. Allness. <laughs> 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 One moment. Wait a minute. Do I know? Do I know what love is? No. Understand what it means. The truth of the matter. When I am jealous, angry, suspicious, uh, all the things that human beings are. Is that love? So to find out what it is, to come upon it, I must deny totally what it is not. And what is not is the dissipation of energy which takes place in division. You follow? To love somebody, love, not so, love means no dissipation of this battle. You understand? <coughs> Do you have that love? Not you, madam, I'm just asking a question, putting a question. Do I, do you have that love in which there is has there has never been the taint of battle. In which there's never been a scratch of hurt. Now think it out, you will see. So if you if you if you experience a truth, so ah, I don't experience no, truth. If one experiences, ah. well, if, if one if one becomes part of a truth, ah, well, ah, that's it. Sir, look, sir, we see that light out of the window. Hmm? You translate it in one way and I translate it in another way. That makes no difference to the light out of that window. The light isn't concerned about your opinion or my opinion, it is light. Like beauty, it's you, you, can't, you translate in one way and I translate, but beauty isn't your translation of it. 
in the same way. Truth is there, not yours or mine. I don't identify myself with truth. I'm too damn silly to identify myself with something which is not measurable. So there is only seeing that and not I see it. Therefore your question, Madam, it becomes very important. The, see, the difference between seeing and recognizing. If I recognize truth as an experience, truth is then an illusion which is merely the memory of my hope of truth. So recognition, experiencing of truth, experiencing God, experiencing enlightenment is such trivial nonsense. Sorry, I'm... Because that implies the experiencer and the experienced. Therefore, still there is a division. Which doesn't mean I am light. There is only light. Oh, sir, this is tremendous meditation. You don't know how deeply one has to go into this. And the more you go deeply, meditation is this tremendous inquiry in which no illusion exists at all. Only fact, only what is, not my interpretation of what is. What time is it, sir? Quarter to one. Basta per oggi, no? Bene.